What is going on, everybody? This is Clean Cut Audio. I'm Tom Kelly, and as always, I'm here to show you how to make your podcast sound just a little bit better with a little bit of help. Today, we're gonna be ditching the noise gate and teaching you how to eliminate crosstalk, background noise, and just really any unwanted noise at all by using strip silence and manual gating. Play the intro. Ugh. I forgot we don't have an intro. So if you or anyone that you know is especially skilled in motion graphics, hit me up, hello, at cleancutaudio.com. I'm looking for a killer intro to make this channel just rip. Before we get into the video today, I've got a couple things that I wanna cover real quick. I have a mountain of microphones at home. I've been having companies send me equipment over the past couple weeks to do a couple gear reviews, shootouts, demos, stuff like that so that you can really know what equipment you wanna buy before you spend the money on it. And we might be doing might definitely be doing a couple giveaways, some mics, maybe interfaces. So if you are not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that. And if you are subscribed, thank you, but let's take it a step further. Ring that bell to make sure you don't miss any of the videos and that you don't miss any of these giveaways. Now let's get into it. Let's talk about noise gates real quick. I know that noise gates are really popular in the podcasting community because well, they help eliminate noise. The problem with them is we don't really know what they're doing and when, where, all of that important stuff. Two things, it might accidentally cut some breaths out halfway through, make some really awkward edits or cuts that you don't want to be there, or more often than not, it will not cut something that you want it to. For example, a cough, a sneeze, someone banging around the microphone because for some reason people love to do that when they're not talking. A noise gate is an imperfect way to cut unwanted sounds. And how it works is you have a threshold and you say anything below this threshold is noise get rid of it or severely lower it. Again, the problem is a cough is gonna be louder than any threshold that you set because a cough is louder than normal speech typically. So a noise gate won't help you in that instance. So I'm here to champion spending just a little bit, and I mean a little bit of extra time to manually gate your audio. And by that, I mean just cutting stuff, just delete it, get rid of it. There's a couple tricks. One in particular is called strip silence. And it is a feature that I use on every episode that I do to make sure that each speaker is as focused as possible. Meaning when one person is speaking, I don't wanna hear anything from the other person's channel when they're not speaking. Again, sniffling, coughing, getting a drink of water, burping, whatever. You don't want any of that coming through. You want your listener to be laser focused on exactly what is being said and nothing else. All righty, here we go. We are in Pro Tools and what I'm gonna be showing you is a typical example of what happens in a recording. Now we have our main track of audio on the top here, and on the bottom is an example of what a guest might do, or what a host might do while the other person is speaking. Let's take a listen. Hey, Tom Kelly here, and I am recording a little sample <laughs> to demonstrate how noise gates will fail you every single time. For example, what I'm saying right now is the important thing, and what's happening on the other track of audio <laughs> is a distraction, it's noise, it's a barrier to mm. entry for focus. Now, the best thing to do is just get rid of it. All right, so what a lot of people will do is say, put a noise gate so you don't hear what's going on in the other track. The problem is, let's put a noise gate on here. We're gonna set this threshold. So let's say we're gonna set it on this top track and we're setting it for a threshold that isn't gonna cut out the speech. So let's take a look at what that is gonna look like. Hey, Tom Kelly here, and I am recording a little sample to demonstrate how noise gates will fail you every single time. For example, what I'm saying... All right, so this is set so that it's picking up speech and it's kind of getting rid of the rest. So now let's apply that track to what's happening on the bottom here, and you'll hear that it's going to cut this silence out, but what it's not going to do is get rid of the actual noises. Let's take a listen. Good so far. <laughs> Okay, so a noise gate didn't help in that instance. What would it take for a noise gate to cut out that cough?
All right, so it's kind of getting rid of it there, but with a threshold that high, you're not actually going to hear any speech over that. So this is an imperfect system for cutting out noise. So the best thing to do, if you don't want to hear coughs, if you don't want to hear any of that garbage, get rid of your noise gate and just delete it. Like that audio never happened. All right, so there's nothing to distract you. There's no way for that sound to come through because you deleted it. It's gone. You don't need to guess what a noise gate is going to cut and what it's going to leave. Now, let's look at this in a practical example. I'm going to hide these two tracks. I'm going to show you an actual episode here. All right, so these are two audio signals recorded in the same room. You can see the top is the signal. The bottom is the bleed. We don't want mic bleed. You don't want that at all. So, again, you could set a noise gate so that it'll leave this and it'll cut this stuff out. But there's a lot of instances where the bleed might get real loud for a second and that might come through and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you're cutting everything that you want to cut. And the only way to do that is to go through your entire track and you are going to delete. Now I can see you all rolling your eyes because I know you don't want to do this for an hour long track. I've heard people tell me I tried to do that once and it took me four hours. Let me just say, I do this for every episode. When I do it by hand, I can do an hour long episode in under three minutes. Okay. I also do four episodes a day. And I've been doing that for years. So you get pretty fast at it. The problem is you can still go faster. If you know anything about me, you know I'm all about efficiency. So how can you be more efficient? Well, it's called strip silence in Pro Tools. All right, so to get to strip silence, we're going to go in Pro Tools to edit, strip silence. But again, if you care at all about efficiency, you're going to know your hotkeys. You're going to know it's Command U. That's it. It's simple. It's a hotkey. Learn your hotkeys. All right, so the way to look at strip silence is like a gate that you're semi-destructively adding to your signal. It's going to be physically deleting audio that you don't want to be there. And here's the cool thing about it. The first parameter here that we have is the threshold. We're determining what is signal and what is noise. Right now, it's saying anything under 42 decibels is noise. We can see that it thinks everything here is pretty much signal. So we're going to raise our threshold until these white boxes right here. That is showing you what it's going to keep and anything outside the box is going to throw away. So we're going to dial this in more. It's still keeping too much noise. You can see all of this right here is noise and it's keeping some of it. So we're going to keep adjusting that threshold until all the noise is gone. So that's, that's pretty good. That's cutting out a lot of the noise. The problem is it's also cutting out a lot of the signal. So we're going to leave the threshold where it is because we're really focused right now on the noise. And now we're going to start looking at the signal in order to put some of the signal back into these white boxes. We're going to play with the pads. So we're cutting out too soon here. This is still signal that it's cutting. So we're going to add some of the end pad and what that's doing is saying, after it drops below 21 decibels, we're going to wait 530 milliseconds to actually cut the signal. And we can see here that it's giving us a little more time before it actually chops that signal off. And we're going to do the same to the start pad, but we're going to do a little bit less. I usually go around 200 milliseconds because in order to make edits more transparent, you want a quick in and a longer fade out, and that will really help hide a lot of these edits. All right, so the last way we can really clean this up is with the minimum strip duration. And what that means is what it considers silence, a strip of that is not allowed to be less than the amount that you set here. Now we can see if we drag this out up in length, that strip is about three tenths of a second. Now it wants to cut that out, but that's probably his breath. So what we, will, what we can do is actually add time to this minimum strip duration, make it like a second so that it won't cut anything that's less than a second. This is going to help a lot 
in not cutting out signal that we actually want. So this is looking pretty good for our, our step one in this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit strip. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and hit strip. Now look at that, all of that bleed, all of that crosstalk is gone. And again, this is actually a really good example that I just pulled up on. If this were a noise gate, this right here would come through. But we don't want it to because this is clearly mic bleed from the track below. Now that we can physically see what it's allowing to come through and what it's cutting out, we can go through and just delete that because we know that we don't want it and we're physically able to see that it was there all along. So that's a good step one. Now what I'm going to do is go through the entire track and I'm going to clean this up. This track is 153 minutes long. And for those of you who are absolutely slaying at math, that's just over two and a half hours. This is a long podcast. They've gone up to seven hours before. And I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to speed the track up for you. But I'm going to film myself cleaning this whole track up. And this is the bulk of the work. That strip silence, if I were doing this in real time, that would take me about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to spend probably 10 minutes cleaning the track up. And then we're going to have a perfectly edited podcast. We haven't taken out the ums and stuff yet, but all of that mic bleed, all of that crosstalk, all of the coughs and the sniffles are going to be gone. Watch me do it in real time. 153 minutes. Let's see how fast I can do this. I'm going to prove people wrong when they say that this takes too long. Most podcasts are between 45 and 60 minutes. I can do that in about three minutes. If you don't have three minutes to make your podcast sound three times better, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right, let's get to it. I'm going to get comfortable and I'm going to edit 153 minutes of mic bleed right now. Let's go. And time. If you were keeping track, I think that was under six minutes. You can see on the timer up here. I threw in a little bit of real time for you. But now I'm going to select all, hit F for my fades. I'm going to fade in 10 milliseconds, fade out 150 milliseconds. And that is our whole track cleaned up. And the reason I said semi-destructive earlier is because you can see it deleted all of this information here. But if for some reason, like if this was cut off on accident, you can just drag it back out and it's still there. Or you can cut it sooner and throw a fade in there. Now, step three is when we actually listen to this whole thing in real time, we play it back and we clean up even further. This is like the really fine tuning editing, but all of that five minutes for a two and a half hour podcast, all that room sound is going to be severely eliminated. Not just that, but this episode in particular, I've already edited it, edited it. <laughs> I love it. I've already edited it. So I know that they recorded in like an apartment in Manhattan. There's a lot of street noise out there. So if we keep both tracks in here, not only are we getting noise from the mic bleed, we're picking up room sound, which is not good, but also all that traffic noise is being doubled by not eliminating these tracks. So you can have your noise by just deleting it. Again, you can probably do that with a noise gate as well, but let me find something for you here. This right here, this even made it through strip silence. If this were a noise gate, we wouldn't know that this audio was coming through. We wouldn't know that we could just delete it and get rid of it forever, never have to worry about it. So this is a process that I do in all of my episodes. If you record, like I said, remotely, this is even easier because you don't have mic bleed. You don't have to worry about things coming in and out. You can just know that when the one person's talking, delete the entire track on the bottom so that... The listener is laser focused on the speaker, on the relevant information. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your client. 
and you owe it to your listener. If you don't have a client, if you are your own independent podcaster, you owe it to your listener to give them the best show possible. And focus is hard. It's hard to get someone's attention. Make it as easy as possible to really focus on what your guests or what you are saying by eliminating all of that noise in the background. Now, while my dog walks around here, you'll see that door mysteriously open in a second. There we go. Bye, puppy. <laughs> I hid a secret in this video. There's a code word. And if you are the first to find that code word and email me, hello at Clean Cut Audio, you can win a 15-minute free consultation call to make sure that we can get your podcast sounding as good as it possibly can. My consulting rates are usually around $200 an hour. So this is a free 15-minute phone call for you. I'm happy to help you out. And if you have any questions about this, we can chat about that. You can email me any questions that you have. If you're not the lucky winner, if you find the code in this video, email me hello at clean cut audio. We'll be back in a little bit with a ton of gear videos, a lot of other tutorials. Some of you have been asking me to cover specific things and we're going to be back very soon. Don't forget to subscribe. We will be having giveaways, free stuff. Make sure you're around for it. Make sure you're aware of all that's going on. You can check out my website, cleancutaudio.com, to learn more about me, learn more about what we do, and if you think we can help you out with your podcast. But that is it for now. Happy podcasting. And again, make sure your shows sound as good as they possibly can. It is your duty to your audience. They are giving you an hour or so of their attention a week, every other week, People on Facebook have about seven seconds of someone's attention. You have 60 minutes. People would die for that. Make sure you give back to your audience by giving them good, clean audio. All right, until next time, see ya.